Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, July 12th. A couple of Tesla Cybertruck bodies in white have been spotted at Gigafactory Texas ahead of the start of production. We've been closely tracking the Cybertruck program since it was arguably the most anticipated electric vehicle program to launch with an estimated one and a half million reservations. And now, an image of a couple of Tesla truck bodies in white has been leaked. It was first posted on social media, but has since been deleted from the original site. In the image, we can see Tesla taking advantage of the world's largest casting presses, with both the front and the back featuring massive cast parts. It's not clear if these are external structural parts of the body seen in the pictures. They look more like traditional vehicle bodies with larger cast parts. Tesla released a vague warning about the potential for the $7,500 tax credit to be reduced on some of their EVs starting next year. Earlier this year, Tesla buyers regained access to the $7,500 federal tax credit after losing it for many years. All Model Ys have been eligible, all Model 3s except for the base version, which only gets half because of its Chinese-sourced battery cells. The Model S and X don't qualify because they have a high starting price. But, in any rate, now Tesla warns that some of their models will likely see their federal tax credit reduced starting next year. Now, we have known that the 2024 edition of the tax credit will have some changes. It's going to be available at the dealership rather than through a tax rebate, the requirement for critical minerals and the battery having to be either recycled in the U.S. or extracted and processed there will go up from 40% to 50%. Similarly, the battery component requirement goes from 50 to 60% of the components needing to be manufactured in the U.S. and their free trade partners. But as to what this will mean for the Tesla vehicles, we'll have to wait and see. According to a new job posting, Tesla Electric, the new electric utility division, is preparing to expand in the United Kingdom. Late last year, after gaining experience through their virtual power plant program, Tesla took things a step further with the launch of Tesla Electric, which actively and automatically buys and sells electricity for Powerwall owners, providing a buffer against peak prices. But Tesla Electric currently is only available to Powerwall owners in Texas, but now they are looking to expand in the UK. This has been confirmed with a local job posting. The company has listed a role called Head of Operations Tesla Electric Retail Energy. So that seems pretty clear to us. Elon Musk announced the launch of a new artificial intelligence startup called XAI, with the goal of, quote, understanding the universe. Now, what this has to do with electric cars is that Musk said that the startup will, quote, work closely with Tesla. After founding and then leaving OpenAI, it has been well known that Elon Musk is working on launching his own AI startup. With the official announcement of XAI, the company is listing dozens of employees, mostly from the University of Toronto, Google, OpenAI, and Tesla. On its website, XAI says that it will work closely with Twitter, Tesla, and other companies. Now, as to what those other companies are and how it will work closely is not yet specified. Elon Musk has already said that Tesla has some of the best minds in AI working on its staff already. So we'll see if some of those transfer over. This week's episode is sponsored by Pedego Electric Bikes, America's number one electric bike retailer. Pedego believes in making e-bikes easy to use and incredibly fun to ride. That's why they offer an extensive selection of over 20 e-bike models, each with endless customization options. No matter your style or preference, Pedego has the perfect bike for you. That includes the Avenue, the company's newest model designed with classic European look paired with modern features. It has a 500 watt motor, 48 volt battery, and a range of up to 56 miles on a single charge, making it perfect for commuting or leisurely rides around town. The Avenue comes in both a 28 inch classic step through frame and a 26 inch step through frame, making it accessible for any rider. With over 220 stores across the country, staffed with knowledgeable local experts and dedicated service technicians, Pedego ensures that you receive personalized attention and support every step of the way. Pedego also offers a five-year warranty on all e-bikes, which is among the longest on the market right now. In July, Pedego is running an exclusive promotion for electric listeners. You can save up to $500 on their bikes, including the newest bike, the Avenue. You can visit pedego.com slash electric to get access or hit the link in the show notes. Thanks again to Pedego for sponsoring. 
SAE International has voted unanimously to form a task force to expedite the Tesla NACS connector standardization process. And we spoke with the chair of the task force for some insight. The most important thing that he told us was that SAE's task force aims to publish its work by the end of this year, which is significantly faster than what we thought it would take. Rodney McKee, PhD, who is chairing the force, said that SAE is the only standard-setting organization that would be able to publish this quickly because the timelines for meetings and consensus with the other organizations, the ISO and the IEC, are much longer due to the complex documentation process by these international organizations. Another reason for the quicker timeline is because the NACS connector already exists on millions of vehicles and makes up the majority of installed bases in the U.S., since their stations are listed to UL standards and have been proven in the real world, many of the questions are already answered. The standard will likely take the official name of J3400. You can call that J3400 or J3400, but what the public decides to call it is anyone's guess. And that includes NACS or just the Tesla plug, which might still live on in the colloquial wording. McGee said that Tesla has been very helpful with the process leaving the future of the connector up to the consensus-based standardization. This has dampened some concerns across the industry, especially in Europe, which was actually skeptical of the NACS being a protectionist move. Europe has mandated non-proprietary charging connectors before and recently wasn't happy about the EV protectionism in the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. So this recent groundswell of support for a standard control by one American company was met with skepticism. But now, having standard-setting organizations in control of the future of NACS makes it much more palatable. Despite strong performance from Porsche during the second quarter, sales of its sole electric vehicle, the Taycan, fell 5% year-over-year. Porsche says deliveries of the electric sports car continue to be impacted, quote, by shortfalls in availability of parts more than any other model. Now, according to information from Automobile Watch, the parts Porsche is referring to are primarily semiconductors. The report notes that up to 5,000 of them are installed in Taycan models more than any other on their lineup. Although the report claims that the Porsche Taycan problem should be a thing of the past as the shortages will be eased. Porsche aims to deliver around 40,000 units this year, which would represent an increase of over 5,000 units compared to last year. Shares of Lucid Motor are falling after reporting a drop in second quarter production. It's down over 10%, and this is unexpected, especially considering that many EV makers are seeing growth in the second quarter. Lucid produced 2,173 EVs at their facility in Arizona, delivering 1,404 between April and June. Now, earlier this year, Lucid said that it was aiming to build between 10 and 14,000 models this year, and they're falling significantly short of Wall Street expectations. With 4,487 produced so far, they have a long way to go to get to their goal. Toyota and Stellantis, two of the world's largest automakers with a history of opposing EVs, both filed complaints with the U.S. government as the EPA finalizes its 2027 to 2032 proposed emission standards. The companies believe that the EPA's standards promote unrealistic sales goals. The companies go on to say that the proposals don't take into account infrastructure, material costs, high prices, and so on and so forth. I think we kind of know where this is going. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Mark Burnett says, Nice job, Joe. Nice work, Electrek. Thank you very much, Mark. Quick Charge is designed to keep you in the EV News fast lane with a quick top-off of the day's events. In the three years or so of Quick Charge, it's missed less than six unscheduled days off, if my estimates are correct. We have had technical errors from YouTube, which has prevented uploading a few times, which is quite interesting. But you can still find us on your favorite podcast player in audio form, including Apple Podcasts, which I actually never use myself. <laughs> but thanks for your comment, and thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have... Have a great day.